on this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. The tennis teams have multiple athletes with Crossroads League recognition. We take a look at what's next for fall sports with the conference tournament looming. We bring in the new head coach of the women's basketball team to get an early look at their season. And we've got your Maple Leaf Minute and more on the Globe Sports Corner. Live on the campus of Goshen College, my name is Kate Boddicker saying welcome to another episode of the Globe Sports Corner. As you heard in the intro, we've got an inside look at a few of our fall teams in action. A special guest coming into the studio, your Everett's Financial Student Athlete of the Week, the Maple Leaf Minute, and more. So let's send it straight into the action. We'll start on the tennis court with junior Filippo Gallo and first year Timo Novak making the all Crossroads League team. Gallo finished the season with four and four records in both singles and doubles and Novak finished six and two in singles and four and four in doubles. Gallo has also made the team every year of his college career. The accolades don't stop there for Maple Leaf tennis. For the women's team, sophomore Blanca Bodo and first year Uliana Dotsenko were also named the all Crossroads League team. Bodo finished five and three in singles and four and four in doubles and Dotsenko finished six and two and five and three in singles and doubles. Bodo has now gone back to back seasons as an all Crossroads League player. We want to give a big shout out to the tennis program for their success this season. And some news from the sideline, beloved black squirrel mascot Dash celebrated their second birthday last week. We wish Dash a belated happy birthday and say thank you for being the hype behind our crowds at our athletic events. And finally, we step onto the diamond for our baseball's second annual Doug Wellenreiter Maple Leaf World Series, the team's best of three inner squad series that closes their fall schedule. We got a unique opportunity to capture some mic'd up moments, so let's send it to our very own Colin Eccles for a look. Thanks, Kate. Here are some of your top plays from the Doug Wellenreiter Maple Leaf World Series. Sophomore Nate Pinedo gets his started from left field for Coach Stricker's black team. He gets a base knock his way. We'll scoop it cleanly on the run. Big throw and wait for it. Oh, yeah, baby. Gets yeah. the play at the plate. A big run saved early in game one. Fast forward to the end of that first game. Team Black trailing to Coach Kermode's purple team 7-6. In the final half inning, runner on second. Freshman Aiden Calvi blisters a single to left field. Comes hard down the first baseline. Takes a turn. Throwing error made by Team Purple. Will send Calvi to second to move the winning run into scoring position. A little bit of a double celly there at the end. Then a batter later. Calvi still mic'd up with senior Joseph Serta at the dish, and the bats stay hot. Joseph Serta pokes one through the left side of the infield, and Calvi, rounding the bases, will score the winning run for Team Black in game one. You gotta love the helmet flip and the ever, ever so classic dog pile. A lot of energy for Team Black at the end of that first game. Rightfully so. That's a big walk-off win. Despite Team Purple's efforts in Game 2, they just weren't able to get it done. Black team will come out with a win in a two-game sweep in the Doug Wellenreiter Maple Leaf World Series. Love to see the sportsmanship afterwards. Team Black victorious for the second year in a row. For Globe Welcome Sports, I'm Colin Club, Eccles. Baby. Kate, back to you. Thank you, Colin. With that, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll get an update on several of GC's fall sports teams as they make their way into the close of the season. All that and more coming up on the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College. Everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique, supportive community, right here in northern Indiana. Cutting-edge academics, real-world learning, and small, personalized classes make the difference. All surrounded by world-class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. Tyson Miller got a chance to sit down with the coaches of the women's volleyball team and both soccer teams to get an update on how the season has gone so far. With fall sports starting to wrap up, Globe Sports took a look at men's and women's soccer as well as women's volleyball to check in on their season and get a feel for the postseason picture. Women's soccer lost the University of St. Francis on Wednesday, dropping them to 1-9-4 and nine and four overall, 0-4-2 in conference play. Obviously, from a results perspective, it hasn't gone the way we want to this point. You know, it's been some tough results. Positive is, and, and we were talking about this last night after a tough loss, was 
you know, the how proud I am of the players because of their character. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of teams and a lot of players that just would fold and, and um, not keep going. Um, but if you watch us play, that's not the case. GC currently sits 10th in conference, but behind three other teams without conference wins. With three games remaining, a win or two might be enough to propel them to the postseason. If you're talking about outcome goals, the outcome is to get into the playoffs and see what happens. We still have that chance. It's, it's, it's crazy and wild. We could, we win on Saturday, we could jump to sixth in the conference. Men's soccer also lost to the University of St. Francis on Wednesday, dropping them to 3-7-5 and seven and five overall, 0-4-2 oh, in conference. I mean, ultimately, we're still not getting the results that we'd like to see. If you're just looking at the byline of the scores at the end of the day, right, where the schedule is or where we are in the crossroads. Uh, but we're showing improvement. Uh, we've got a couple more wins, some more ties. Like we are finding the back of the net, scoring, scoring more goals this year than we did last year. The men sit 10th in conference with only three games left. They would have to win at least two out of three and hope for some key losses in order to make the playoffs. Women's volleyball is 6-22 and in the season, 1-11 and in conference. They're coming off a loss to St. Francis on Wednesday and haven't won a set in over a month when they beat St. Francis in straight sets on September 14th. We've seen progress. We still have a really young team. So in terms of growth and improvement and things like that, there are definitely pieces and players. Armani Guidry Austin has been a really bright spot in the middle as a freshman. Ava Egoff has been really good and, and started most of the year for us. And obviously, somebody like Sadie Brenneman, kind of as an anchor, as a senior. Goshen currently sits tied for ninth in the Crossroads League. With six games left, it's a chance they could sneak into the postseason. We think we have a couple opportunities. Obviously, we got St. Francis on Saturday. Um, we'll play Bethel again. Um, so we have a couple other chances where we think we can, you know, we can put a good match on the court and have a chance to win. Um, and then there's some matches. Obviously, we want to see growth. We want to see improvement. We want to see us kind of peaking right at the end of the season, regardless of, of who we're playing. For Globe Sports, I'm Tyson Miller. Well, even if things haven't gone exactly as they'd like this season, it sounds like you can't count the Maple Leafs out quite yet. Best of luck to all those fall athletes as they continue to battle for the postseason. After the break, I'll be sitting down with new Maple Leaf women's basketball head coach, and we'll see what we can expect from that team with the season opener fast approaching. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Globe Sports Corner. Globe Sports Corner. Joining me in the studio now is GC Women's Basketball alum, member of the 2015-16 semifinalist team, and now head coach Tyra Carver. Coach Carver, welcome to your first time in the studio as head coach, and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. So I wanted to start out by addressing the obvious. Though you've worked with the Maple Leafs before, both as a player and as an assistant coach, this is your first year as a head coach. So how does it feel to be stepping into a role like this, especially following in the footsteps of your own coach, Stephanie Miller? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I couldn't have picked a better place to start my head coaching journey um, just with the history and the tradition that I've had here. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, it's been a good couple of months, you know, going in. Obviously, it's pretty busy, you know, new head coach things that you have to learn and just kind of you know, maneuver on the fly, but so far, so good. Yeah, and the team only has two new members on the roster this season, so your squad is largely returning players. How does that affect how you're looking into the new season with consistency in team chemistry plus the new additions? Yeah, so that was one of the things that I discussed with my coaches, just about um, we don't want to bring in too many new players. We have 11 seniors, so um, one, I just, 
you know, we already have a core group, a core unit, so I wanted to build on that. Um, it made it a little bit easier for me to kind of come in and implement, you know, new ideas and new plays because that group, they already were kind of gelled and bonded together, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to just kind of throw new things at that group. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. And getting a bit more specific uh, into specific players, who are going to be the ones that you're going to be looking to the most this year in terms of leadership, but also in terms of output on the court? Yeah, for sure. Well, first, I uh, definitely have to give recognition to Sayan Mohammed. Um, she was one of our star players last year, earned second team all Crossroads League, and then obviously just um, making preseason second team all Crossroads League again. So um, I'll definitely pull on Sayan a lot this year. Um, Zion Neat will also be a, a featured player for us. I'm looking for Kyla Foster to kind of step up a little bit more. Um, Ava Licklider will also um, be in, in our point guard, which she's a really great point guard. So we have a, a strong core and definitely looking to pull on those four a lot this year. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially from their performances, I know, last year. And you've also brought back your former teammate, Jamani Thomas, as an assistant coach. She's incredibly decorated from her time as a player at GC. So how does it feel to have her back in the building with you? And what's she bringing to the table that makes her so crucial to this team now? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a joy having Jamani back. Um, Jamani was a key part of that 2015-16 um, team, you know, as a part of myself. Um, without her, you know, we wouldn't have, have gone as far. So it's pretty good to have her back. Um, we kind of share the same idea is as far as basketball wise so um, having someone that one also um, understands Goshen that has been here and understand the needs that um, you know we're looking for um, as a program I thought it was a no-brainer to have her back um, here at Goshen um, she loves Goshen I think she grew up a lot here um, we, we all grew up a lot here um, being at Goshen so having her back was a no-brainer for me and I'm super excited that she's here um, the girls are gelling with her pretty well and um, she's already bringing a lot to the table as far as workouts and just kind of having different ideas that we could do with that team. Mm -hmm. And finally, Coach, the season is just a couple weeks away now, which it's kind of wild to think about that we're already <laughs> at that point in the year. So what is it that fans should be most excited about as this season gets ready to tip off? I mean, the thing that I'm most excited about is just us being able to compete. Um, I think this group, they're really hungry this year, and um, I really appreciate their hungerness. And so I think this year you guys will just see us play a little different style of basketball. Um, obviously with the transition, like I think I'm you know, implementing my style. So um, it'll be a lot faster pace, um, want to get a lot of shots up. And you, you'll just see the girls just have a different energy and just being able to compete. But most of all, I want them to have fun. Um, like I said, 11 seniors. Um, this is their last year playing collegiate basketball, so I really just want them to have fun. So you guys will see that on the court as well. Well, Coach, thank you so much for coming in to talk with me today. Congrats on the new role and best of luck as you get ready to start the season. Awesome. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the Everance Financial Student Athlete of the Week, and we'll get to the Maple Leaf Minute, giving us a rundown of what to expect in the upcoming week in GC Athletics. You're watching the Globe Sports Corner. Do you dream of a place to belong, to begin your journey, and to believe in something bigger than yourself? A place where you aren't lost in the crowd, but are part of the team. Communication professionals are in high demand, and Goshen College will give you the tools and hands-on experience to transform your passions into a rewarding career. Begin your career in journalism and be an agent of change at the best college newspaper in the state of Indiana, The Record. Begin a filmmaking career with Five Core Media and work on Emmy-winning productions that propel graduates to Hollywood and beyond. And take our Semester in LA program to get a jump start in the industry. Begin your career as a public relations major, one of the fastest growing professions in the country. Begin a rewarding broadcasting career on the air at 91.1 The Globe, the best college radio station in the nation. Be a DJ, host TV shows, and broadcast live sports. Believe in yourself and make it possible at Goshen College. Back to the Globe Sports Corner, let's take a look now at the Everance Financial Student Athlete of the Week. For the second time in three weeks, that honor goes to Mercy Chibet, a senior on the women's cross-country team. Last week, Chibet won the Bethel Invitational with a time of 18 minutes, 53.5 seconds. This was enough to put her more than 35 seconds ahead of the second-place runner. Chibet and the whole cross-country team continue to impress week in and week out. Congratulations, Mercy, on being this week's Everance Student Athlete of the Week. 
It seems to be a common theme with this episode, but now it's time to look to the future and see what lies ahead this week for all our fall student athletes with the Maple Leaf Minute. Joining me today with all the info is Isabel Masood. Bell, what's on the docket for our teams next week? Thank you, Kay. It's a loaded week for Maple Leaf Athletics. Let's dive right in. We head to the Ruth Gunning with women's volleyball. They start the weekend with a home match against the University of San Francisco Cougars on Saturday the 19th at 3 p.m. The Cougars are the Leafs' lone conference win this season, so it should be a competitive match and a bonus. It's senior night, so it's a great night to come cheer on the team. Live broadcast coverage can be heard on 91.1 The Globe. Then, on Wednesday the 23rd, it's U.S. Highway 20 Cup action back inside the Ruth Gunning as GC hosts the Battle Pilots. First serve for the match is at 7 p.m. Then, next Saturday, the team plays the number 15 Mount Vernon Nazarene Cougars on the road. The match starts at 1 p.m. More U.S. Highway 20 Cup action Saturday the 19th with both soccer teams taking the pitch against Bethel. Women's soccer will head to Mishawaka for a road matchup starting at 6 p.m. While the men's team will host the number 9 pilots at the Goshen Soccer Complex for a senior night matchup. That match starts at 7 p.m. with live play-by-play -play coverage on 91.1 The Globe and the Go Leafs livestream. No midweek games for either squad, but next Saturday they return to action against the rival Grace College Lancers. The men's team is on the road, women's team at home starting 5 and 7 respectively. Next Saturday the action continues with the bowling team. Both men's and women's team head to West Lafayette, Indiana to compete in the Boilermaker Classic. First row for both teams at 2 p.m. And finally, both cross-country teams will head to Grand Rapids, Michigan for the Great Lakes Challenge on Saturday the 26th. Last season, the men's team took fourth place and the women's team took second. The time for each race is yet to be announced. Good luck to all GC teams in the next week. More information, schedule, scores and updates can be found on GoLeafs.net. My name is Isabel Masur. Back to you, Kate. Lots to look forward to this week, particularly from those senior night matchups. And that is going to do it for this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Don't forget to check out the Globe on all our social media platforms. That's Facebook, Instagram, and X, all at 911 The Globe. You can also find us on the internet at globeradio.org and on the App Store for iOS and Android with the Globe Radio app, so you don't miss any Globe content while you're on the go. Check back in two weeks for another episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Until then, for the entire Globe staff, for Belle Massoud, my name is Kate. Kate Boddicker, thanks for watching.